Hi everyone, I'm Paula Martinak coming to you from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm going to read to you from my 2019 novel, Cleo Rising, which was published by Bywater Books. And uh, I'm going to read from chapter three. This is the story of a young woman named Livy Bliss, who's from Western North Carolina. And she has moved to New York City in 1983 in order to live uh, an openly gay life. And uh, she becomes, uh, she gets a job with a, a literary agency in New York City and becomes the companion and helpmate of uh, an older writer of the uh, modernist writer generation named Cleo Hart. And what she is supposed to do is bond with Cleo because they are both from the same part of the country and also um, help her because Cleo is trying to write something for the first time in about 40 years. She's been, she's been a recluse. And so Livy is to both do errands for her and also to help her with anything she needs for her writing. So in this scene, it's the scene where Livy first meets Cleo for the first time. She goes to her apartment in, in Milligan Place in, in Greenwich Village um, because Cleo has called her and told her that she's in trouble. So that's where we'll pick up. The cops were already on the scene by the time I figured out where Cleo lived. On a tucked away enclave, I passed twice before a woman walking a yappy shih tzu gave me directions. Milligan Place sat behind a locked gate topped with its name in ironwork script. Someone buzzed me through the gate without a word, but two beefy men in blue stopped me at the front door of Cleo's building. Can't go up there, son, said the older, heftier cop, raising a hand in case I tried to get through. My haircut, along with my uniform of chinos, polo shirt, and penny loafers, had scrambled their gender signals, so I fell back on my small stash of feminine charm. Thank you for getting here so quickly, officer. I'm Olive Bliss, the one who phoned you all about Miss Hart. She's a client of my boss, B. Winston, the literary agent. The cops stared at me blankly, likely baffled to hear a woman's voice coming out of a teenage boy. She just buzzed me in. I might be able to calm her down. They waved me by, and I ascended to Cleo's floor two steps at a time. What had seemed like a genteel building from the enclosed courtyard had jagged cracks in the hallway paint and some missing floor tiles. The air on the third floor smelled like rotting fruit. The room where Cleo Hart had lived for 40-some years was 14 by 14 at most, with a kitchen alcove attached to a corner like a barnacle. The bathroom, visible through an open door, was barely big enough to turn around in. The space overflowed with books, not just on the long table-like desk that straddled the two front windows and on the wooden shelves clinging to the walls, but also arranged like furniture. Next to a comfy-looking armchair, a stack of tomes with a mug and a pad of paper on top served as an end table. Towers of books also straddled either end of a narrow daybed. Two more brawny cops faced the windows, obscuring my vision of Cleo. This was my first encounter with male NYPD officers, and being oversized seemed to be a prerequisite for the job. One of the cops turned as I entered, his hand brushing his waist holster, and I sucked in a breath. I held up two empty hands and tried to puff out my little boobs to show I was a defenseless woman. I'm the one Miss Hart called, officer, I said, Livy Bliss. I saw Cleo then for the first time as she peeked from around the cop's massive chest. In her famous studio portraits, she was always seated, and I had no sense of how statuesque she was. When she rose to greet me, we stood at eye level. And in fact, the first thing I noticed were her eyes. Her sharp cheekbones pointed directly toward them, accentuating the icy blue that looked like it belonged to some nether world. Despite the steaminess of the room, saw... Cleo wore a calf-length nubby wool skirt and cardigan sweater, both in a battleship gray that matched her hair and made her eyes stand out more. Miss Bliss, she said, her voice raspy but strong, there you are. The cop whose first instinct had been to shoot me let his hand travel back to his side. Ma'am will file the report, but we don't have much to go on without a physical description of the intruder, the other cop said. Spittle flew from Cleo's mouth as she said, What more do you need? I told you I thought I saw a colored man on the fire escape. How difficult could it be to find a colored man on the rooftop in this neighborhood? Go do whatever it is you're supposed to do and find him. A northern girl might have been shocked by Cleo's use of colored instead of black. But growing up under Jim Crow, I'd heard it many times before from white folks, including my own family. I'd used it myself as a child. 
The cops clomped out of the apartment a few moments later, and I snapped into helper mode. Are you okay, Miss Hart? I offered her an arm to lean on, and we made our way to the armchair one step at a time. It was unclear if she really couldn't manage on her own, or if she was putting on a good show for the help. I will be fine presently, Miss Bliss. In 40 years, I have never had occasion to be visited by the police, and if that is what New York's finest is like, well, this city is in a heap of trouble. She sank onto the chair cushion with an appreciative sigh and went all good-natured on me. In fact, she was so pleasant when I offered to brew her a pot of coffee before I returned to work. I thought the reports of her orneriness must be overblown. Maybe, like my Mima, she was sweet as tea most of the time, a harpy only when her arthritis flared up. But as I settled her in with her coffee, the other Cleo trickled out. This cup has a chip, she said, turning it around. She took a sip and frowned. And you've put in too much sugar. Sorry about that. I'll get it right after a few tries. I am not here for you to experiment on, Miss Bliss. I like it the way I like it. The flash of pique caught me off guard. B would want me to kowtow and bring her a fresh cup, but I noticed Cleo taking big, appreciative gulps. And yet you seem to be drinking it right down, I said. The moment could have gone badly for me, as Cleo stared me down with those otherworldly eyes. But she turned back to the cup and polished off her drink with a resounding slurp. Bring me another before you go, would you? Thank you so much. If you're interested in Cleo Rising, it is available at bywaterbooks.com uh, on sale, 25% off all the, their entire catalog through the end of the month, and also at your favorite uh, independent booksellers. Thank you so much.